Hey guys, so I'm Rod Kaiser from the Restoration Studio LLC, and today we're going to talk about finish removal on the Haywood Wakefield furniture. So when we approach Haywood Wakefield and we try to determine how we're going to remove the finish, you know, usually we have two options. I'm actually going to give you, I'm going to give you three options today. Um, so we're going to remove it either with chemical stripper or sandpaper. I'm also going to show you that we can use a card scraper as well, okay? So you have these couple different methods, and if you're searching around, people are going to give you different types of advice. Um, most of the people are going to say, all you need to do is um, remove it with sandpaper. That's not necessarily always, always the case, though. It is the case probably over 90% of the time, and I would say that that's how I usually am going to approach it. I'm usually going to approach it in the, in the sense that I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to remove it with sandpaper because I would say that that's the norm, okay? However, quite a few times we've had pieces come through and they don't sand off with sandpaper. So you end up wasting a ridiculous amount of time. Now for those couple people that are going to have those types of pieces, um, they're going to have a miserable experience sanding because they're just going to sand, 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 sand like forever, okay? Now why does that happen? why every once in a while you'll get a piece that you know just doesn't want to just doesn't want to sand off well from what i've seen is you're, you're going to get sets here and there sporadically that maybe grandpa had had in his house and he was wise enough to know that the finish wasn't in great shape okay so what he did was he applied another coat of an extra coat of polyurethane to it so you're going to get pieces. I have seen these pieces quite a few times. Um, you're going to get a piece through every once in a while that has more finish on it than it would have originally. Somebody's put a fresh coat of finish on it at some point in its life. Okay, it could have been 20 years ago. All right, it might have been more recently. But regardless, it's going to have a thicker finish than it would have had had it was was if it was just original Haywood Wakefield. So it's the original color. It looks the same, but it's got more finish on it. And those are going to throw you a curveball because you're going to think that you can sand it off and it just doesn't sand off good. And it takes you forever. Okay. So how do you determine? How do you know? Right. This is pretty much standard practice in our in our business, and we're a professional furniture finisher, right? So we do this stuff all the time, and we have a sort of a technique because with all kinds of furniture, um, I'm not going to chemical strip it if I don't have to. So we chemical strip a lot of it, right? But there's a lot of pieces that come through that I'm going to do this little step. And I'm just like, we know we're going to have to sand it after we chemical strip it anyway. So we can avoid the whole chemical strip process. I'm going to do it. And this is how I make that determination. Um, what we do is we take a piece of 120 grit sandpaper, okay? Just from your hardware store, right? 120 grit, okay? And I'm going to go to the piece of furniture, and I'm going to sand it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to kind of stop this for you. Okay, I'm going to sand it like this. I'm going to do about ten passes with 120 grit sandpaper with not a whole lot of pressure. Okay, just like this. Okay. Now. Of course, this was dumb, right? Because you can see all the finish just came right off, right? Clearly, I don't have the chemical strip this one. Now, they don't all go that easily. Um, the reason that I do this is because there's a lot of pieces. My, my theory here is I'm going to do about 10 passes like that. If I get to the roll wood within those 10 passes, I'm going to sand it, okay? Now, if I take these, these passes, Okay, and I do this, you know, roughly about 10 times, and I'm not to the roll wood yet, I'm going to use a chemical stripper. And my reasoning for that is because now I know that I'm going to have to put too much effort because it's not just, you, anytime you're doing furniture, you're not just dealing with flat surfaces. If you're just dealing with flat surfaces, it's a little bit different. But it's all the other areas, right, um, that can be difficult to sink. If you have to put too much effort into it, um, to get to the roll wood, then you know that throughout the whole piece it's going to be easier, quicker, really, um, going the chemical stripper route and then following up with sand, with, with sandpaper. Um, you're going to save yourself a lot of time, and since we are, we do this for a living, it's all about speed and time, right? 
So that is how I go ahead and determine whether I'm going to use sandpaper or chemical stripper. Do that little test for yourself and you'll be able to kind of come up with an easy, you know, determination of which is going to be the fastest and the most effective route for you to go. Okay. All right. So then the next phase will be, um, now that we've determined on this piece, we're going to go ahead and use sandpaper. Um, how do we go about doing that and what's the best way of doing it? As far as chemical stripping goes, if you have made the, uh, you know, the determination that in your case, um, your best going chemical stripper. Um, we have vid videos um, on our YouTube channel. So you can go ahead and check those out on how to do stripping. We're not going to do that here because most of the people are going to find with Haywood Wakefield that they're going to be able to go ahead and use sandpaper. So that's what we're going to go ahead here and teach you how to do. All right, so with sandpaper, so what do you use? What grit, what kind of sandpaper, what kind of sanders? Um, let's, I guess we'll start with sanders. Now, you don't need to go out and spend a whole lot of money on a sander. Um, just to sand one or two pieces. Now, if you do this for a living, you know that might be different. You might want to go out and get a good sander. I do this for a living, okay? So if you want to check out our business website, rerefinish.com. Um, we've been refinishing furniture for, you know, over 30 years. And you would think that I have amazing sanders. I don't. I have garbage sanders, really. Um, you know, I use this one all the time. This is like my, you know, my go-to sander, a pneumatic orbital sander. Um, this is what I use most days, most of the time, but you need a fairly large compressor to be able to turn this um, without, you know, it's slowing down on you. So you need a lot of compressor capacity to use uh, a pneumatic orbital sander. So we won't really focus on these, but these are really my favorite sanders. Now, as far as just a random orbital sander, you're going to need one if you're going to do this job. Um, now, you, for, for, I, I'm not going to really support any particular brands. Um, reason for that is because, you know, for many years, um, I was a Dewalt guy and I still have a lot of Dewalt tools, but I used to love that, you know, as far as an electric orbital, random orbital sander goes, you know, I, I loved the Dewalt sander. Um, you couldn't tell me anything else. Okay. Um, we had a couple of them that lasted five, six, seven, eight years, like maybe even, um, and they were just terrific, and that's using them all the time. Like they should never have lasted that long. I feel like if I get a year out of the sander, I'm impressed, you know, because I use it a lot, and they're not really designed for professional use. So, yeah, I don't, I don't expect too much out of them. But the Dewalt's like were above and beyond, right? Then the two old ones that I had died. Um, went out and bought new ones, and didn't last a month, and. I thought, well, okay, I just got a bum sander and got another one, same thing. So I actually had to gravitate away from those because they weren't lasting anymore. Um, and that's the thing, times change, okay? So manufacturers change, things get sent overseas, they get bought out, policies change, uh, whatever, right? So even if I told you that a sander is great, you might watch this video and in, in six months, everything might be different. Okay, so right now, let me just tell you what we're using right now. We're using these really low budget, low quality sanders from Harbor Freight. That's it. But they're lasting us for, you know, over six months to a year. Um, and they cost like 30 bucks. They're literally disposable. And for that kind of money, what they do is they spin in a circle. And for a random orbital sander, that's all I'm asking it to do. Now, I do like one with variable speed. So that's really the one thing that you want to kind of look into. Um, for DeWalt, for instance, they do sell, at least they used to, they sold two different versions of the same sander. One had variable speed, one didn't. Um, the cheaper one didn't, but you don't really want that. You, you want one with a variable speed. Uh, this one does have variable speed on it, even though you typically are always going to use it on high, but you want that option. Okay, so but just a nice variable speed random orbital sander. It doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be a pretty cover, and it doesn't have to have a fancy name on it or something that you know makes you look like a better craftsman because you're using a better brand tool. Um, as long as it spins, okay. So, right now, we're just using the uh, what most people would consider the junky Harbor Freight sanders, and it's I'm not ashamed to admit, okay. 
that's what we're doing. Um, and what I suggest here is sandpaper. Now we're just talking about um, Halo Wakefield, not other brands, not other types of furniture. In this video, it's just Halo Wakefield. So in Halo Wakefield, we're going to go with 100 to 150 grit when we're talking about raw wood sanding. Now when we get into talking about finishing, different game, and we're going to go with completely different grits. But for raw wood sanding to get you down to the original finish, 100 to 150. Typically, I'm going to say 120 to 150. 100 is a little bit coarse. It's getting a pretty aggressive. However, I do use it and it, it doesn't cause any problems. So you can get away with it. Now, 100 to 100, 100, 120, 150, those three grits. Are you going to need to go finer than that um, afterwards? Uh, my suggestion is going to be for the most part, no. For the most part, on Haywood Wakefield, this is such a dense hardwood that you do not necessarily need to follow it up with a 220 grit or something finer um, before applying the stain. And we're going to assume that you're using the weird finish stain because I don't know why you would use why you wouldn't. Um, so, anyways, 100, 120, 150. Those three grits are going to get you where you need to be. Um, as far as just, you know, sandpaper for hand sanding, same thing, 120 grit, you know, pretty much going to cover you. It's really going to be the only grit you're going to need uh, for raw wood sand. Now, one thing that we should um, probably go over here real quickly, as far as sandpaper goes, is, you know, people will talk about swirls. Um, you know, you don't want to get swirls. If you use too coarse of a grit, you're going to get swirls, and swirls are definitely the enemy. Okay, we don't want swirls. However, I find that more times than not, specifically since we are talking about Halo Wakefield, now if you're finishing a softwood, it's different, but we're not talking about that right now, right? We're talking about Halo Wakefield. Um, these sandpapers are not going to leave swirls in this wood. Now, what you have to realize though, okay, is a lot of times it's the type of sandpaper that you use. As a general rule of thumb, we won't get into what they're made of, okay? Um, as a general rule of thumb, I like to go with the sandpapers that are gold. Gold or brown, okay? They are a safe grit sandpaper that you can use, and it's a soft enough grit um, that it's designed. The gold sandpaper is designed for wood removal. Um, you want, the gray sandpaper is, is also, but it's just becoming very uncommon anymore. So the gray sandpaper, silicon carbide, great for finishing, but we really don't even see that much anymore. Uh, but the gold sandpapers are the ones that you want to use, the brown sandpapers. Um, if you go into the red, I believe, I don't even remember what that is, and I might be wrong on this, so don't quote me on this, okay? Uh, I didn't do my research, I apologize for that. But I want to say it's maybe aluminum oxide um, with the red. Anyway, the red sandpapers, um, I find, are a harder grit. They're more designed for like metal and things like that. Um, they're not designed as, as much for wood. So I usually stay away from anything that has been, that's red. Red is going to be a harder grit and that's the type of sandpaper that's going to have a tendency to leave you swirls. So oftentimes, again, as long as you stay above 100, if you go down to 60, 80, 40, you're just asking for trouble. The gold papers, you're, you're going to be fine. With the red papers, you can, even if you go into the, the 120s and stuff, um, it's possible that you could get swirls. So stay away from the reds um, for the most part. It's just, you're, you're safe in that way. Okay? Now, I told you I was going to show you a third method um, of finish removal, and I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so we have one other way that we can remove finish from these pieces outside of sanding and chemical stripping. Now this doesn't take us, we still have to do sand. You know what I mean? We're working on what we're going to be sanding. You don't have to sand here in your trouble. Um, we're going to use a card scraper. Now my card scraper, it's not all nice and shiny and pretty in it because I use it a lot. Um, but a card scraper, okay, also called cabinet scraper, Alright, there's a there's a basically just a square piece of metal. Alright, there's a way to sharpen these and burnish them so that you get a nice edge. I won't really get into that with you. There's videos that teach you how to do that. I use the easy method with a file, um, but 
you'll you'll find videos that teach you how to sharpen them and keep them nice and sharp so that you can continue to use them um, over and over and over again because you'll you'll wear them down and dull them out. But you're probably not going to have that situation if you just get one just to use for a piece like this. Um, all right. So what you do with the card scraper, okay, is you just hold it at an angle like this, okay, and apply apply some a little bit of pressure and 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 pull towards you. Okay, just like. Now, if I weren't doing this for like video purposes, I, I'd flip this up and I'd actually be able to use both hands and get a lot more leverage, and I'd, you know, even be doing a whole lot better than I am. But you can see already how much finish I've been able to remove just in a couple passes, right? Some I should show you. So you're using a card scraper like such. You can then flip it around, okay, and use the other side, the other edge, okay. Because they will fall down on you, and then you have to, you know, you have to sharpen them a little bit. All right. So and then you've got so basically you've got four edges. You know, you get this side, this side, and then you flip it this side, this side. But just like that, I went ahead and I already removed all the finish on here. Now you can follow that up with a, you know, a little bit of sandpaper at that point. At this stage, on this stage, you probably don't even need to use an orbital sander. But, you know, usually you find you have little things and that's especially on tops and whatnot. But, you know, usually you're going to use an orbital sander anyway. But, you really don't need to. On this one. Okay, so again, it's a cabinet scraper. Um, some people call them cabinet scrapers, some people call them card scrapers. You'll usually you'll get it in a little pouch in a little pack like this that's in there. And then there's a tool. Then there's a tool called a burnishing, you know, I think they call it a burnishing tool, something like that. Um, this is used again, that's a whole nother thing, like you know, how to sharpen them. I won't get into that. Um, and I just use a file. I use a file of sharpness. So, cabinet scraper is another nice little um, sort of little bonus way of removing the finish. So, all right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace out.